May the peace, blessings, and mercy of God be upon you. The management of the channel, guide us to the straight path, Adil al-Masri, welcomes you. We wish you to spend good times filled with the remembrance of God Almighty. It presents to you the best sermons delivered on Friday. We collect them for you from all over the mosques of the Islamic world. It will be translated into most languages of the world, God willing. May the benefit be widespread, God Almighty willing. Best regards, Adil al-Masri. If you like the channel, please subscribe to it. We ask God Almighty to guide us to the straight path and make us among the righteous and reformers. And may he accept our deeds and ignore what will come to us, Amen. Today's sermon, God willing, will talk about the role of the history of Islam in forming hearts. Now for the first sermon. May the peace, blessings, and mercy of God be upon you. Indeed, praise be to God, we praise Him, we seek His help, and we seek His forgiveness. And we seek refuge with Allah from the evils of ourselves and our evils. Whoever Allah guides, there is no one who can mislead Him, and whoever He leads astray, there is no guide for Him. I bear witness that there is no God but God alone, without any partner, out of respect for Him. I bear witness that Muhammad is His servant, His messenger, and His friend. May God bless him and his family and companions, and whoever follows them in righteousness until the day of judgment, and may God bless him and grant him peace. A lot of blame. O you who have believed, fear God as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslims. O people, fear your Lord, who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from them many men and women. And fear God by whom you are questioned, and the relatives. Indeed, God is a watcher over you. O you who have believed, Fear God and speak words of righteousness. He will amend your deeds for you and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys God and his messenger has achieved a great victory. As for what follows, O believers, meeting is good and mercy. Through it Muslims will be strengthened and feared. Their civilization flourishes and they advance. For this reason, Islam has played a major role throughout history in calling Muslims to harmony and brotherhood. We find in the Noble Quran the gratitude of God Almighty for his prophet by warming the hearts of the people of faith. He said in his dear book, and he reconciled their hearts. If you had spent all that is on earth, you would not have reconciled their hearts. But God has reconciled between them. Indeed, he is mighty, all wise. In this sermon, we will explore in our long history, full of situations and events that were reported to us in the Sunnah and history books, how is Doctor the truth of history in forming hearts. But before embarking on it, we would like to point out some Sharia texts and jurisprudential rulings in which Islam's keenness to bring together Muslims and their unity. As God Almighty says, the believers are only brothers, and in the Sunnah the Prophet, may God bless him and grant him peace, says, and be servants of God, brothers. There are many legal rulings. Among them, his call to adhere to the Muslim community. As in his saying, may God bless him and grant him peace. You must adhere to the congregation, for the wolf only eats from the sheep that strays from it. And he, may the peace and blessings of God be upon him, said, whoever wants to be blessed with paradise, let him adhere to the congregation. The Sheikh of Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, may God have mercy on him, said, among the great rules that are part of the unity of religion, uniting hearts, and uniting the word. The same thing. He said, meeting and coalition are among the greatest matters that God and his messenger have made obligatory. Among the things that the true religion has prescribed to strengthen the bonds of brotherhood and alliance are, gathering to perform congregational and Friday prayers in mosques, and perform prayer, and pay zakat, and kneel with those who kneel. Likewise, the people of the Qibla perform the Hajj obligation at one time and in one place, and they perform the same actions during the Hajj obligation. There is no doubt that acquaintance and meeting between Muslims necessitates harmony, love and brotherhood. Islam legislated what necessitates harmony and love. It obligated the rich to pay the zakat on their wealth to the poor among them so that love prevails and the bonds of harmony take root. Rather, he urged all Muslims to give charity so that the bridges of love and affection are strengthened. From this, the Prophet, may God bless him and grant him peace, urged us to strive for reconciliation between people, because this will protect the meeting of Muslims and their safety from harm. Fragmentation. Then he, may God bless him and grant him peace, said, shall I not inform you of something better than fasting, prayer, and charity? They said, yes. He said, reconciliation between the two parties, for corruption of the two ties is the problem. There are illustrative historical situations that occurred that were the reason for the formation of Muslims and their unity, which were passed down through the generations and became a model. 
to be emulated and beacons by which one can be guided. When this prophet, may God bless him and grant him peace, realized the importance of coalition, meeting, and unity, he became a brother among the immigrants who believed in him, and now it became. He made that work one of his first priorities, and this work was a great historical milestone in the biography of the Prophet and his honorable companions. When the Prophet, may God bless him and grant him peace, brought brotherhood between Abdul Rahman bin Awf and Saad bin al-Rabi, may God be pleased with them. Saad said to him, The Ansar know that I have the most wealth among them, so I will divide my wealth with you in two halves. I have two wives, so see if you like them and divorce her. When her waiting period is over, you can marry her. Abdul Rahman said to him, May God Almighty bless, for your family and your money. This great situation and great event was present in the lives of the companions, and they practiced it in their lives. This is Othman. May God be pleased with him, when he, may God be pleased with him, prayed four times in Mina. Abdullah bin Masud, may God be pleased with him, said, I prayed two rakas with the Prophet, may God bless him and grant him peace. He performed two rakas with Abu Bakr, and two rakas with Omar. I wish that of the four rakas I had two facing forward. Then Abdullah prayed four, and it was said to him, You criticized Othman, then you prayed four. He said, Disagreement is evil. History conveys to us, in its most beautiful pages, images of the followers who understood the fruits of the meeting and its importance. Yunus al-Sadafi, may God have mercy on him, says, I have never seen anyone wiser than al-Shafi. One day I debated with him about a matter, then we separated, and he met me and took my hand, then said, O oh Abu Musa, isn't it right for us to be brothers even if we do not agree on an issue? Ibn Taymiyyah, may God have mercy on him, said, Indeed, the predecessors used to disagree over secondary issues, while maintaining harmony, infallibility, and reconciliation between each other. Our history conveys that the weakness of the Muslims, their humiliation, and the enemy's dominance over them was due to their dispersal and conflict. All of this is in this world, but in the hereafter, it is the satisfaction of the generous one, the acceptance of the merciful one, and victory in the garden of bliss. When the disease of division and conflict spread among them at the end of the Abbasid state, the Tatars invaded them and invaded their homes. They made them taste all kinds of humiliation and humiliation, until the Muslims gathered and united, and they returned to their senses. So God helped them in the battle of Ain Jalut, and the meeting of Muslims was an end to the painful story of the Tatars in Muslim countries. Among the history books that remind us of the victory of the Muslims over the Tatars is what happened in the Battle of Shakhab in the year 702 AH. When the Tatars wanted to enter Damascus, the princes and scholars gathered and allied themselves to wage jihad and confront the enemy. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was moving among the princes, army commanders and people, urging them to meet and inciting them to fight the Tatars. An army from the Levant and an army from Egypt joined with them in the battle. The triumphant victory came on the second of Ramadan due to the Muslims coming together and coming together. What a beautiful outcome. And all the outcomes of the meeting are good and blessed. Read history, for there are lessons in it. A people went astray without knowing the news. In a great historical event in which there was unity of Muslims and protection for their blood, history narrates that when Ali died, may God be pleased with him. The matter went to his son Al-Hassan, and he sent to Muawiyah to pledge allegiance to him, but Muawiyah did not agree to that, for justifications that this is not the place to list. However, the witness said that a fierce battle would have consumed the two teams after a dispute broke out between the two leaderships and the two armies. So it was good that God inspired him to make peace so that he would protect the blood of Muslims from being shed. And when they gathered from the faction, Al-Hassan abdicated, and he was more deserving of the caliphate than Muawiyah. May God be pleased with all. That year was called the year of the community. There is no doubt that Islam did not appeal to its followers and urge them to harmony and brotherhood. Except for the abundant fruits and blissful virtues in this world and the hereafter. According to harmony and brotherhood, they increase love between Muslims and lead to cooperation, compassion, interconnectedness and synergy. And other virtuous values and profitable gains that can be reaped from the garden of brotherhood and harmony. All of this is in this world. But in the hereafter, it is the satisfaction of the generous one, the acceptance of the merciful one, and victory in the garden of bliss. And God spoke the truth when he described a scene from the afterlife that tells the condition of brothers and friends in the paradise of the Lord of the worlds. He said, And we removed the hatred from their breasts as brothers on beds facing each other. God bless me and you in the holy Quran. 
It has benefited me and you with the verses and wise remembrance it contains. I say what you hear and I ask forgiveness from God, so seek his forgiveness. He is the forgiving, the merciful. Now for the second sermon. Praise be to God alone, and may blessings and peace be upon the best of his creation, and upon his family, companions, and those who follow him. Now then, servants of God, whoever turns his gaze to the situations reported in the history of Islam will realize how those situations and events were a beacon to guide him. Ha! And practical lessons to be followed in uniting hearts and uniting nations and peoples, and there is not enough room to mention more of that. O oh, believers, uniting hearts and unifying words is a legal obligation and a social necessity, and the means for that are numerous, and here are some of them. Ha! Unity of belief. The one belief of Muslims, which has no difference in the origins and principles of religion, contributes to the unification of Muslims, and you work to compile them and bring them together. The messenger believed in what was revealed to him from his Lord, and the believers each believed in God and his angels and his books and his messengers. Among the aids, the unity of rituals and laws, the rituals that Muslims apply in their worship are the same and do not differ. The laws they resort to in all aspects of life are the same. Al Saadi said, and among the types of coming together in the religion and not being divided in it are what the street ordered of public meetings, such as the Hajj and Eid gatherings, the Friday prayers, the five daily prayers, and Jihad, and other than that are acts of worship that are not complete or complete except by coming together for them and not being separated. Among the aids of the meeting, Muslims pride in their religion, and al Farooq, may God be pleased with him, spoke the truth when he said, we are a people whom God has honored through Islam. No matter how much we seek glory other than Islam, may God humiliate us. Anyone who is familiar with the history of Islam will find the sincerity of most Muslims' affiliation to their religion and their pride in it. When something unexpected surprises them, they rush to their religion, clinging to it, taking refuge in it and seeking refuge in it, seeing in it salvation and glory, abandoning their nationalistic, patriotic and sectarian fanaticism. How beautiful is the speaker's statement. Be all together, my sons, when something happens, and do not separate yourself alone. The spears refuse to break apart when they come together, and when they separate, they break into pieces. Among the aids, compassion and sympathy among the people of Islam, and the feeling of one body. As the noble prophet told and said, the example of the believers in their mutual love, compassion, and compassion is like the body. If one of its members complains, the entire body suffers from sleepless nights and fever. O oh Muslims! It is God's grace upon us that he has guided us to the religion of love, harmony, brotherhood and peace. There is no evidence of the greatness of this religion, which we are honored to belong to, than its ancient history and its glorious role in uniting the hearts of the servants. We must develop the bonds of brotherhood and alliance, and reject anything that harms them or tears them apart. O oh God, unite the hearts of your faithful servants, unite their ranks, and unite their word on the truth. And may blessings and peace be upon your prophet. God Almighty said, Indeed, God and his angels bless the Prophet. O you who have believed, bless him and grant him peace. May blessings and peace be upon the guiding mercy, the enlightening lamp, and the intercessor of people on the day of judgment, and upon his family, companions, and followers. Servants of God, indeed, God and his angels bless the Prophet. O you who have believed, bless him and grant him peace. He said, May God bless him and grant him peace, as reported by Muslim in his Sahih. Whoever sends a blessing upon me, may God bless him ten times. O oh God, bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad as you blessed Abraham and the family of Abraham. You are praiseworthy and glorious. And bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad as you blessed Abraham and the family of Abraham in the worlds. You are praiseworthy and glorious. May God be pleased with his four rightly guided caliphs. Abu Bakr, Omar, Othman and Ali and about the companions, the followers, and those who followed them in good deeds until the day of judgment. And grant us your mercy, O most merciful of the merciful. Our Lord, give us good in this world and good in the hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the fire. Servants of God. Indeed, God commands justice, charity, and giving to relatives, and forbids indecency, abomination, and transgression. He advises you that you may remember. So remember God, the great and majestic, and he will remember you. Thank him for his blessings and he will increase you. And the remembrance of God is greater, and God knows what you do. Praise Lord, the Lord of glory what they describe. And peace on the senders and praise be to Allah. Thus we reach the end of the sermon. I hope you liked the video. 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell button to receive all new updates, God willing, peace, mercy and blessings of God.